Carlson tutorials. In this video, we're going to solve this expression. Uh, this equation is simple, but we're, we're going to apply some tools in order for us to make it work. And then some laws of indices will be used. And the first law I'm going to make use of is the product power law. And if you don't know product power law, or if you've forgotten the law, I'm going to drop the link to that law in the description of this video. So here, I'm going to bring your memory back to this expression of this kind. If I have m to the power of n, what happens? This will multiply themselves. So I will have it to be a to the power of mn. Similarly, if I have this expression like this, 2 to the power of 2x, how we got this was just like this from this law and this expression became 2 times x is 2x similarly i can switch it i can switch this to become 2 to the power of x and 2 outside x times 2 can never be x2 the real number has to come first before the um the variable so at this point x times 2 will be uh, yeah we have 2 to the power of 2x so this and this they are the same so I want to express this this one in this form so that we have this looking alike. That is the idea, right? I hope you understand. So this expression can be written as 2 to the power of x all squared minus 3 to the power of into 2 to the power of x plus 2 equal to 0. All right, that is what I was trying to achieve and we have achieved that. So let's let go of this so that we have enough space. To finish up this work so at this point we can make some sort of assumption now what is that assumption we're going to make this 2 to the power of x to be represented as any variable of your choice can you use a can you use b but obviously you can't use x because x is already there so let's think of using p all right so anywhere i see 2 to the power of x i'll replace it with p so i'll have p squared minus 3p plus 2 equal to 0. This forms a quadratic equation. And in this quadratic equation, you can use any method of your choice. If you want to use the formula method, that's no problem. If you want to factorize it or using, uh, what is it called? This other method, completing of square method, that's not a problem. So at this point, what we need to do is to check if it is factorizable. Think of two numbers such that when you multiply, it gives you uh, plus 2 and when you add it gives you minus 3 I think those numbers will be minus 1 and minus 2 so minus 1 if I multiply these two numbers I will have positive this if I add this it will give me this so I will have p squared minus I'll pick one of those number minus p instead of 1p I will have minus p minus 2p this represent this expression plus 2 equal to 0 so at this point, what do I need to do? I have to group this. And if I group these two, I will also group these two. What is common here? P is common. P is common to both sides. So I will bring out P. If I fetch out P, P squared divided by P, what will remain here will be P. Minus P divided by P, that is 1. Similarly, minus 2 is common on both sides. I have minus 2 into minus 2P divided by minus 2, what we remain here is P. The sign here is minus because we have positive sign. Minus, minus will give us this plus. 2 divided by minus 2 will give us minus 1. This is equal to 0. So at this point, you see that these two in the bracket are the same. I will have to pick one of it and also consider the one outside, which is P minus 2. And this will be equal to 0. What is the next point? Uh, according to this expression, if I have a b equal to 0, it's either a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. So if I have this, this equal to 0, it's either, it's either p minus 1 is equal to 0 or p minus 2 equal to 0. So if p minus 1 is equal to 0, it simply means that p is equal to, by the time minus 1 crosses, it becomes plus 1, or P would be equal to, by the time this minus 2 crosses to the other part, it becomes plus 2. This minus 2 crosses to become plus 2. So, but then, the question says we should find the value of X and not P. So, because we've made an assumption here, we have to retract that point. What do we need to do at that point? 
is to recall that. Recall that. Recall that we have 2 to the power of x equal to p. And then let's check for this first case. When p is equal to 1. When p is equal to 1, please anywhere I see p, I'll substitute 1. So I have 2 to the power of x equal to 1. At this same point, what do we need to do so that we have similar base? It becomes 2 to the power of x equal to, if I have 2 to the power of 0, it is 1. And why did I choose 2? Is because I'm having a base of 2. If here we have to be 5, I will choose a base of 5. Hope that makes sense. At this point, since the base are the same, the cancel out, then equates the power. Because if the base are the same, it means the powers also must be the same. So therefore, x is equal to 0. We just got one value of x. Let's consider also this point when p is equal to 2. Go back to that expression. Recall that 2 to the power of x is equal to p. And our p now is 2. So we have 2 to the power of x equal to 2. And 2 is having an invisible power, which is 1. Because 2 to the power of 1 is still 2. And you can only see this invisible power with the use of microscope. Alright? So at this point, you cancel out this. Therefore, x is equal to 1. Therefore... The values of x we have for this expression are x equal to 0 or 1. So this is the solution to this problem. If you want to check for extranosity, check if the value of x is intact or is correct. Anywhere you see x in this expression, you can substitute 0. When you substitute 0, you see that the left answer will give you 0. If you also substitute 1, the left answer will also give you Whichever one that works, that means that is the solution to that problem. If the two works, that is it. Thank you very much and stay subscribed. Subscribe to this channel if you've not subscribed, please. I really appreciate those of you who have been uh, stable coming over to watch our videos. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Peace.